Hey everybody, welcome back, nice to see you again. Today's video is going to be about this tank again. It's winter here in the UK and that brings with it some challenges for a tank like this. So this is my custom display tank. It's a discus tank. It's five foot by two and a bit foot by two and a bit foot. Um, sump underneath, all that great stuff. It's got this canopy here, but it's essentially an open topped tank. An open topped tank, <laughs> open topped tank is not easy to say, open topped tanks come with a set of challenges and one of them is evaporation. It's not normally such a big deal in the winter but I am losing kind of five litres a day something like that quite easily but in winter when it's a bit cooler it seems to accelerate that um, as well as that if I don't have good enough ventilation here so if I don't have the heating on full blast in the living room or if I don't have a window cracked open it can lead to condensation issues because when you get cold air on the outside, warm air on the inside and humid air on the inside, you get water, you get water build up, you get mould, you get all these kind of issues. So I need to deal with it basically because the wife isn't very happy, so we'll sort it out. So one of the ways to sort it out normally would be you'd cover it up. Um, but because this is an open top tank and it's quite large, it's not as easy to just nip out and find something to put on. Um, I did have something previously which was a bit like this this kind of greenhouse material which is it's mostly see-through but it had a bit of a blue tinge and I used to use this this is the sump cover actually and I used to use this and although I couldn't see anything visibly different with the light it was obviously changing the light somehow putting more of a blue tinge in it and I think that was contributing to some of my algae issues as well as just filtering out some of the light and I don't really want that because the plants are starting to look good in this tank so I want to keep them that way so I went online, did a bit of research and have ordered something I've used before. Again, it's a kind of greenhouse product, but it was a hell of a lot cheaper than some of the solutions I've seen before. It's this stuff. Um, so what I've used in the past is a product called Chlorotherm. Chlorotherm. Um, but this is from a company. I'll put all the details downstairs. Downstairs, in the comments even. Um, it's basically a thin polycarbonate twin wall thing which is rated to let a lot of light through because it's for greenhouses. This particular one's called Sunlight. No pun intended I'm sure. But what we're going to get soon is a test of how good my measuring skills are to see whether this actually fits. Um, but where is the... so this is... it's essentially a roofing panel and it does have some UV protection and things like that. But I'm hoping it's not going to filter out too much of the light and cause me any problems that way. It comes with a, a covering and it's a product I've used for lots of tanks to make makeshift lids. Because it's just really light but really strong and firm as well so it should stand up well and then for all those people. satisfying. Thankfully it's just the backing that's making this look blue at the moment. It's actually, it's actually completely clear so you shouldn't see any difference in the light colours or temperatures um, but it's quite thin at the same time. Thin, light, strong and cheap. This whole panel cut to size was £19 something um, Whereas some of the other ones are a lot more expensive. So this seems to be exactly what I want. So let's get it up there and see if it does what I want it to do. Um, we need to clean it first. I tend to store stuff up here as well. So I've got all my tools here. They're just going to sit on top of the lights. And what I often do is I'll knock them down and I'm always fishing them out. So this will be a remedy to that as well. Shameless plug too. So when I've kept food up here and knocked it in and gone in these ones I've ended up dumping big tubs full of food into the water. If you go on the Aquarium Adventures website you can buy little tubs that I've made. Not made, I haven't actually gone out and made them, I've sourced them and bought them. Screw top lids so as if you do do that and you drop it in there it'll just float and you won't lose a load of fish food and you won't ruin your tank. So go and have a look and see if you fancy some of them. Um, even if you don't there are plenty of commercial foods out there that make them with screw top lids. I mean, that's what I've been using for years, just buying other old foods. This is an old marine food. 
um, that just had a screw top lid. But now you can buy ones with my fancy sticker on. While I'm clearing all this out, it's probably a good time to remind you that I am nearing 10,000 subscribers on here and we're running a bit of a giveaway for my achievement of the 10,000 goal. I assume I actually ever get there. Um, why is that not working? So we'll have to do with that. And if you want to be into a chance to win the prize, so what we're going to do is give away a big box of fish goodies that I've got from various suppliers as well as myself um, to one random lucky winner. All you have to do is comment down below, well, subscribe first, because then that helps us get to that 10,000 goal. Subscribe, if you like this sort of thing. Um, comment down below, hashtag AA10K. And anywhere in the world, uh, once you get to 10,000 subscribers, we'll do a live stream and we'll pick a winner. And we'll send the winner all that stuff. There's a good two or 300 quids worth of stuff in the box at the moment, so it's a great prize to get into. And I would appreciate it if you, even if you've already entered, share it around. Let's get some more people with a chance to win. Oh, looks like it might fit. And in fact, we'll do it this way. The quicker we get to 10K, the quicker I get to send it out. There'll be some new prizes added to it soon. So if you haven't already, click that subscribe button and then you won't miss any of the added stuff that we're going to give away. Might be some merchandise in the next shipment. Oh, this is awkward. There we go. It actually fits. So there you go. Now, no chance of me dropping anything in. It's going to keep a little bit of the condensation down. Well, it's going to keep most of the condensation down. It's going to keep the heat in, even more importantly. Because this is a discus tank, I'm going to be running it quite warm. It's going to keep the heat in. Um, so save me a little bit of money as well. And I don't think it's making a difference to the plants. Looks like the same amount of light's getting through. Pretty happy with that. So what I'm probably going to do is I might cut a little flap, what I've done in the past. I can even do that, look. I can just put, you're now sitting on top of my fish tank. I can go to the other end and wave at you. Um, yeah, so it fits pretty snugly. But what I can do is cut a little flap. And because this is like a kind of corrugated, it's not corrugated, what's the word? reinforced I can cut a slat here and bend it up and that can just be like a little feeding hole and uh, put a little handle on it or something like that so I could just go ahead and drill some holes and leave them in but I might as well keep it as a flap because that's worked quite well in the past I think I want the feeding hole to be over this side because that's further away from the overflows and um, just gives the food a bit more of a chance to get eaten well, I shall turn you around so all I'm going to do is make a little slit For the price of 20 quid, I don't think we can do much better than that, can we? I'm really pleased with that. And when you come away from here, let's go down here a little bit, you can't tell. So you can only actually see the lid when you come right up to it and have a look down on it. And it doesn't matter how much I carelessly move these around or if I throw some food stuffs on there, it's not going to fall in. Perfect. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, in terms of a, a general update on things that are going on, I've got the, um, the the doser that you saw in the previous videos down there. That's working full time. It seems to be bang on. And what I did when I first set it up was I set it up to go into a little tub first so as I can measure and make sure it was actually dosing the correct amounts. Um, and if I'm honest, it's it's making a great difference. The plants are looking fantastic, except for the Java ferns. Um, they're kind of falling away a bit and they've gone all... I don't really know what's going on. I think it's the temperature. If I'm completely honest, I think it's the temperature that's been a problem. But the crypts seem to have done a bit of an explosion. Um, the lily down here, that seems to have taken on quite an extra bloom. As well as all the swords and stuff like that. They're all doing... Uh, every other plant apart from the Java ferns is doing really well. Um, and looking really healthy as well. 
some of the plants were looking a bit brown and a bit sorry for themselves, but those ones are recovering definitely. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with that. What I'm going to do now is we're going to go downstairs and grab the discus pear and bring them back up here and add them to the tank. So we've got the discus in this tank, which were a pear. Um, I brought them as a, they were showing pear signs, but rather than being a confirmed pear, and as I said, when I brought them home, I didn't really want them to start breeding because they were a little bit too small for me. So what I wanted them to do, or what I wanted to do was I'd give them a bit of a chance. So they've been in here for a few weeks on their own. Um, I bought three fish at the time, so once I did a bit of quarantine on them, I took one upstairs, left them down here to see if they were going to do what they were going to do. They have kind of shown signs, I've caught them pecking at the cone, I've caught them showing some kind of courtship behaviour, but it's, if they have laid, they've eaten the eggs before I've got to see them, and they just don't seem 100% happy down here. For instance, they're hiding from me. I have had pairs in these tanks before where they've never shown this sort of thing. So I think they're just a little bit too young and a little bit too immature. So I'm going to put them back up into the display tank. I can use this tank for something else and I'm not quite sure what, but make sure you subscribe because I have some ideas. Uh, but I'm going to grab these two, put them in a bucket, take them upstairs, put them into the display tank, and then the display tank will be really nicely stocked. Um, and that's what you want in a discus display tank, isn't it? So let me grab them. All I'm going to do is nothing exciting. Grab a bucket, fill it full of water, net the fish out, put them in the bucket, take them upstairs, dump them in the display tank. So we'll do that and I'll come back in a minute. So all we have to do to get these fish in, same water as downstairs up here, no different. Just going to grab them in a net and quickly put them in. I've dimmed the lights a little bit by moving them. Gives them a little bit of a chance to be less stressed. And then we slowly let them in. We know that the temperature matches, the pH matches, everything's the same. And it's in. And then repeat with the second one. I don't really need the net, but I might as well use it since I've got it. Take them in. With this, it's not all that different from the plop and drop method that I would use normally for new fish. They're in. I'll leave the light slightly dimmed like this for, I don't know, half an hour or something like that. These should be comfortable enough. There's the door. And we should be good to go. So they've been in, well, less than a five minutes at the moment. They're already swimming around happily together. I'll wait a little while and then I'll take some footage of them with the lights back on again, just so you can see them all. But I'm fairly happy with that. We've done a pretty easy, simple upgrade, cheap, and it's going to save me money. Um, so yeah, what can I say? I'm happy with that. I think we should remind you that we're running a giveaway. So if you want to win some of the prizes, all you have to do is subscribe, like the video down below, leave me a comment saying hashtag AA10K and then you're in for a chance oh, anywhere in the world, you're in for a chance of winning a couple of hundred quids worth of stuff. And anything you want to add? And thanks for watching, like the video and subscribe. Definitely, see, she says it, you have to do it. And hit the notification thing. Hit the notification thing, yeah. most important. Right, see you all. Bye. Bye.